Dr. Anthony Fauci, thank you so much for joining me on the show tonight. I know your time is tight, so let's get straight to it. What is your message tonight to both vaccinated and unvaccinated Americans as to what they should and should not be doing right now? For example, eating and drinking indoors in restaurants and bars. Is that okay now? No, it's still not okay for the simple reason that the level of infection, the dynamics of infection in the community are still really disturbingly high. Like just yesterday, there were close to 80,000 new infections, and we've been hanging around 60, 70, 75,000. So if you're not vaccinated, please get vaccinated as soon as vaccine becomes available to you. And if you are vaccinated, Please remember that you still have to be careful and not get involved in crowded situations, particularly indoors where people are not wearing masks. And for the time being, until we show definitively that a person who's vaccinated does not get the subclinical infection and can spread to others, you should also continue to wear a mask for the time being. And Pfizer, Dr. Fauci, announced last week that their vaccine is effective for at least six months. So should we be prepared to get COVID vaccine booster shots now every six months, 12 months, like we get the flu shot? Is that something we should plan for? You know, we need to be careful about that six month number. The study one only went out as far as six months. So we know for sure it's effective for six months, but it's highly likely that it will be effective for a considerably longer period of time. The way to get the answer is to just follow people closely enough to determine when that level of efficacy or protection diminishes, both with regard to the level of the antibodies as well as clinical data uh, with regard to breakthrough infection. So good news is that it's at least six months. Hopefully, it'll be a lot more. But in direct answer to your question, if it turns out that it is a year or a year and a half, we very well may need to get booster shots to keep up the level of protection. Well, something to get used to, I guess. Uh, and on the subject of herd immunity, you talked about, you know, wear your masks, even if you're vaccinated. Don't just pretend life is back to normal. It's not yet, clearly. Uh, do you have a date in mind for when we get to herd immunity? How will we know when we've reached it? Will you or President Biden just announce it one morning from White House podium? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not going to be that simple. I, I, you know, I really believe that herd immunity with regard to COVID-19 is a little bit of an elusive concept because we don't know what that level of percent of people who were vaccinated plus people who are infected, recovered, and are now immune to reinfection. We don't know what that number is. We know what it is, for example, for a disease like measles, but we don't know yet what it is for SARS-CoV-2. So the best way to look at it is just get as many people vaccinated as we possibly can, as quickly as we can. And what you will see definitely is a diminution in the number of cases per day to the point where you get down to a very low level. When you get there, then you could say you're in a much more protected zone. If you wanna call that herd immunity, you can't really say that because you're not going to know what the specific number is. But just concentrate on getting vaccinated as many as you can, as quickly as you can. Yes. And the vaccine rollout has been a huge success in recent weeks, a record 4.6 million people vaccinated yesterday. One in four Americans now fully vaccinated. But that still leaves three out of four who aren't. And in Michigan, where they're having a horrific surge right now, the governor asked for a surge in vaccines. Uh, but the White House rebuffed her. Professor Ashish Jha, who you know, dean of public health at Brown, says, quote, I would be surging a lot of vaccines to Michigan right now. To me, this is a no brainer policy. And I would be curious to here, why the Biden team hasn't done this? Why hasn't the Biden team, your team, Dr. Fauci, done this? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The first is that you want to make sure 
that the vaccines that are currently there in Michigan are being efficiently distributed and put into people's arms. So you have the leeway and the possibility of doing some adjustments within the state of Michigan. I doubt if it's unidimensional in Michigan that the level of infection in one section, one region, one city, one town is different. I, I'm sure there's a big difference. So what you want to do, if you can, redistribute within the state. One of the reasons why we're hesitant to make that kind of redistribution because when you take it away from one state, you never know where you're going to have another surge. So you may inadvertently be essentially facilitating a surge in one place by pulling vaccines away as you're trying to prevent it or blunt it in another state. And for that reason, we say do as best as you can to efficiently get people vaccinated within your state because there's more vaccination, there's more vaccines in Michigan than there are people vaccinated. Okay, fair point uh, on the numbers. The Trump administration was a disaster on COVID. Uh, we opened the show talking about how Trump officials altered CDC reports. Uh, Donald Trump reportedly lashed out at you again, Dr. Fauci, in a speech last night, calling you, quote, full of crap. Uh, and I know you probably don't want to ever hear his voice again, uh, but he said something similar on Fox last month. Have a listen. Saw him throw out the first pitch in Washington, right? He is a yeah. better pitcher than he is at what he does. If you really look, I didn't really listen to him too much because I was doing the opposite of what he was saying. I know you've said in the past you didn't resign because you didn't want to leave a void, completely understandable. But do you regret staying on if he now says he wasn't even listening to you? He was doing the opposite and gagging you in the process. So why didn't you just quit and speak out freely about the dangers? Well, I think for the reason that you just mentioned, because I did feel that if I left, there would not be a voice there to push back against some of the things that were going on there. I don't want to get into a tit for tat with former President Trump and start, you know, giving a rebuttal for everything he says. That's not productive at all. We have a serious problem right now, just as we've been discussing with the difficult position that the governor of Michigan is facing, trying her very best to get her arms around that. That's what we need to do to be able to try and help out there as opposed to rebutting statements like you just showed on the screen. It's not, it's not helpful, it's not productive. So I would prefer to move on and look ahead how we can address the challenges that are ahead of us. Uh, but just do you accept that he was not listening to your advice? Was he ignoring your advice? I'm just wondering, is that a true statement? Or do you think he actually well, did take you know, on board stuff respect, you said? Well, he did. He listened to some of the things that I and that Dr. Burke said. And then he did not listen to other things. I mean, to say that he did not listen at all to his medical advisors, I guess that tells you something, doesn't it? Yeah, it tells me that he uh, needlessly and negligently helped cause hundreds of thousands of deaths by not listening to his top scientific advisors. Uh, but let me ask you this one other question about the past, because you said we need to move forward. I agree with you. And one of the problems we have now is we have a lot of people, bad faith people saying we don't trust Anthony Fauci. We don't trust Joe Biden. We don't trust uh, the scientists. But there are others who in good faith, just genuinely over the last year, and I think you've recognized this in the past about the mixed messaging uh, and some of the, you know, some of the different advice they've gotten on this very thorny disease. I want to play a clip of you speaking to 60 minutes just over a year ago. Have a listen. Now, when you see people and look at the films in China and South Korea, whatever, everybody's wearing a mask. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. Given you acknowledged in that clip in March 2020 that Asian countries were masking up at the time, Saying we shouldn't mask up as well was a mistake, wasn't it? A huge mistake at the time, not just in hindsight. No, I, you know, I keep seeing that clip getting played over and over again. So if you could give me 15 seconds, I'll go right back at you with this. OK, at the time, three things were going on. We were told very clearly at the coronavirus task force, including by the Surgeon General, who's a good person all the way, that there was a clear shortage of masks. And if we went around recommending masks, 
the health care providers who were putting themselves yes. in harm's way every single day would not have enough. Point number one. Point number two, there was no evidence at the time that masks outside of the setting of the hospital worked. There were no data to show that. Number three, we did not know that at least 50% of the infections were being spread asymptomatically, namely by people that had no symptoms. That's the reason why at that time, we, I and others made that statement. Fast forward a month or two after, A, it became clear yeah. there was no shortage of masks. In fact, cloth mask works. B, we started to see rather substantial data that masks outside of the setting of the hospital work to prevent infection and to prevent you from infecting somebody else. And three, we found out to our horror that 50 percent or more of the infections were transmitted yes. by people who did not know they were infected. Yes. That's the reason okay. why I changed. So, wait, let me just finish, because you showed the clip. First of all, if something is static and you change your mind about it, you're flip-flopping. If something changes, the data change, and you change with the data and rely on the data, you're not flip-flopping, okay? Yeah, understood. Understood. I guess it's just the Asian countries were doing it at the time, uh, and that was the difference. But now we're all on the same page about masks. Your message to Greg Abbott right. and Ron DeSantis and other governors who are rescinding mask, makes, mask mandates, or in Florida, where they never had one to begin with. Look at the numbers in Florida. What is your message on masks now to these governors who are dismissing the importance of masks? Well, I would just get back to what the president said even before he was inaugurated, that we need a universal wearing of masks. He said for at least 100 days, it may well go beyond 100 days. Everyone should be wearing a mask. They should avoid congregate settings. They should keep their distance and they should wash their hands as often as possible. We are not out of this yet. We had 80,000 new infections the other day. Now's not the time to declare victory prematurely. We have not won this yet. We will win it, but we yeah. haven't won it yet. That's uh, uh, a great message. I hope people are listening. Uh, we're out of time, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Thank you for your 37 years of service, I believe, to seven presidents, and thank you for your work over the past year. Appreciate it, and thank you for coming on the show tonight. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.